All right, good morning. This is Nick Webb. Stepping in for Dan Russo who is on vacation. Today is Wednesday, July 18th, 2018, and welcome to Chaken and Power Feed, where we try and sum up what's going on in the market in 15 minutes. So let's get to it. A lot to talk about here, so I, uh, I got a little crazy with the bullets. We've got six bullets today. Uh, I think the big one is, well, there's a number of them, but the big one is that S&P showed resilience, broke through the 2800 level, um, and, and they did that while overcoming the Netflix earnings miss. I've got a slide about that coming up. Um, Fed Chairman Jerome Powell, absolutely on target. We knew exactly what he was going to say. Economy is strong. Rate hike hikes are still coming. Uh, the, the only uh, sort of wrinkle was that trade wars are bad. He basically said if, this, if trade wars continue for a while, it will have an uh, issue with the economy. Industrial production had a solid rebound from their prior month. Manufacturing is not yet being hit by the trade war or the strong, strong dollar. And again, yet. Uh, Google just got hit with a massive $5 billion fine by the EU competition squad. Now, the issue there is not so much what the, the $5 billion, although that's a lot of money, it's really the remedies that will be required. They're going after the Android operating system and its links to shopping and app store and other things around the community. Uh, so in Europe, Android is absolutely the predominant uh, mobile phone operating system, far more than iOS. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays out and what Google's gonna have to do to sort of come in line with whatever EU mandates. Futures markets, again, point to slight upward gains. I've left that bullet there for a couple days now. It seems like the futures market, every morning we come in and uh, it looks like things are gonna be okay in the market. Uh, just sort of late breaking news, Morgan Stanley reported pre-market. Again, another solid beat by the uh, financial firms and prices are up in the pre-market already by about over 3% actually. So, so good news for Morgan Stanley uh, stockholders. So let's take a look at that resilient S&P 500. Not only did it break through its resistance, it did so with some adverse news coming in the start of the day. So really tremendous sort of upward move. Watch today to make sure that there's a confirmation. If there is, we'll, we'll move the resistance band up to 2850 and leave it there. And again, depends on what happens today. We may have to move it up to 2900. So again, a solid move upward. This bodes well for where the market's going from a number of reasons. Not only did it break resistance, but that resilience, uh, you know, again, Netflix is one of the FANG stocks and the resilience that it showed shows that there's a lot of investors that still have money on the sidelines that are willing to put it to work. Uh, so, so that was a, yesterday was a confirming day to me for the market. So again, courtesy of stock charts, a uh, couple of uh, charts to open the day. This just takes a look at the FANG stocks and shows what happened yesterday in the market. So this, you can see that huge initial drop uh, for Netflix upon open. It gapped open uh, all the way down, losing 13% of its value. Just a massive drop. Um, and again, remember, this is an earnings report where it actually achieved earnings, but the forward guidance and the revenue side of the equation looked really bad. So, it, but it wasn't a total disaster of an earnings report, and still it just got pummeled. Uh, there was a lot of uh, fear in the marketplace that Amazon and Facebook and Google would follow along in sympathy to Netflix and, and sort of have their prices adjusted at the same time. And you can see as the market opened, that did happen. But literally within minutes, the market sort of was looking at it as a time to get into some of these stocks and they just started buying and that stayed constant throughout the day and everybody earned, with the exception of Netflix, everybody earned over 1%. 
Netflix actually clawed back almost 8% of its initial drop. So again, very resilient market. Things looked extremely good there. So overall, the major indices, S&P up by almost uh, four, 40 basis points, NASDAQ up by 61 basis points, small caps doing better than the S&P 500. Uh, all of the power bars with the exception of material segment and the Dow 30 are looking solid. So really uh, market looks solid. It just looks like it's in a good place right now. Uh, and that's really, we have, it's kind of my five favorite time of the year. You've got Q2 earnings, which traditionally are reasonably good. Uh, you've got NFL preseason opening shortly. It's really a good time to be around. And uh, the market is absolutely doing what it's supposed to be doing. So let's take a look at the stock of the day. Always fun to see what Chaykin cooks up here. In this case, they pulled Penske Auto Group, which is a stock that really has uh, bounced around, not doing a whole lot. But if you look at it, the financials and earnings are extremely strong. Uh, earnings have been growing rapidly. Uh, you go down to the technicals and, and technicals are saying, hey, you know what? Maybe time to sort of look to see if it's uh, a little undervalued, see if there's a, a good time to enter. You may want to look for a confirmation before jumping into Penske. Um, just one note on experts. It's sitting there in the middle, but that's for insider trading. So the insiders are actually selling some of the Penske stock. Uh, but the experts, the analyst sentiment, analyst uh, estimate trend is very strong. So this is a stock that has good earnings, good expected earnings. Um, and it's something that, that could be one to keep an eye on. This is actually a really interesting stock. Uh, where have the sectors gone in the last five days? Again, you know, the, the market has sort of bounced around, not done much for the last uh, week or so. And so you can see these bars have, uh, have not really expanded on either side. Uh, technology, again, I think there is an anticipation that technology stocks are going to do extremely well in this quarter's earnings. Uh, LAM research came out yesterday. We'll talk about that later on. But you can see that there's an expectation that they're going to do well. Financials have already been doing well um, and should continue to. Outside of a couple of glitches, uh, most notably with Wells Fargo, the financials have been reporting universally strong earnings reports. So a couple sectors that should be good for the remainder of earnings season. So let's talk about telecom services. It's time. It's 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 turn in the rotation. Uh, so, strangely, the subsector has outperformed the S and P by uh, almost seven percent or almost eight percent. This is different from what we normally have seen with telecom services over the last two three years. So it's definitely sort of bounced off its uh, low and is uh, moving along. Even with that, though. We still rate it weak. There's more bearish than bullets, bullish stocks. If you look at three of the weaker stocks, Boingo is one that had initial promise. I think everybody saw it when they, they started taking over air, airliner uh, communications and then sort of ran into a wall as they realized how expensive and hard to do it was. And, and so they've, they've, they've hit a wall. Orbcom and Comscope, again, another couple uh, telecom stocks that are out there. Um, so let's take a look at earnings. Again, we're hitting earnings season. This is a fun time to be watching the market. Goldman Sachs, I mean, just absolutely blew their earnings doors off. Um, and you would expect the market to respond extremely positively. Not so. There were a couple things in the report that, that drew investors' attention. Things like uh, some of the costs started going up, legal costs. Uh, and so even though it was a tremendous quarter, beat earnings by you know almost 20%, it, 
it didn't matter. They, uh, they actually ended down for the day. Could be a time to, they also announced that they were, uh, their CEO was retiring and a new CEO coming on board. Um, but I think they're such a well-run company with a deep, deep bench in their management. I don't think that's going to really slow things down. CSX, again, what's interesting about these earning beats is they're not beating it by a penny. They're actually beating it by 15, 20%. This is unusual uh, to see this kind of level of earnings beats uh, for, you know, Really, I, I can't remember the last time I saw it beat by this much, repeatedly, company after company. Uh, so CSX, again, solid quarter. Uh, Comerica sort of going along the banking situation, which a lot of them have been uh, very strong reports, progressive in the insurance industry. Uh, so that was nice to see an interactive broker coming in. Again, all of these are not beating by a penny or two which shows you sort of set up the analysts and then, you know, surprise a little bit. Um, they're beating it because they've got great results. So very, very uh, bullish reports yesterday. Coming up today, I already talked about Morgan Stanley. You've got Northern Trust reporting before the bell. One to keep an eye on is Textron. That is going to be indicative of the industrial base of the country. Uh, after close, American Express is going to be interesting, as is IBM. IBM is uh, one that we rate as bearish, so take a look at that one. So who moved yesterday? And there's so much to talk about. I only have 15 minutes, so I'm not going to get to everybody. But I do want to talk, um, you know, again, you've got Schwab that was up. I think uh, financials are continuing to be strong. J&J &J led the day. They came out early with very impressive earnings. And that was one of the reasons why the market really dictated. LAM Research is an interesting one. They don't report for a while. But their stock, they've had earnings after earnings surprise just beats for the last four or five quarters. And I mean, they've been beating it very, by a large margin. Uh, so if they do that again, the stock price is sort of languished for the last quarter. Uh, so there's an opportunity here that maybe this has gotten a little undervalued. Um, so I think people are beginning to notice that. And, you know, there again, there could be uh, some opportunity there. I just want to flip over to the loser side because services, uh, marketing and communication services, Omicron, they beat earnings, but they disappointed on revenues. And they disappointed in a number of different ways uh, in their earnings report. And that's why they're, they're down so heavily. What's interesting is some of the other marketing firms that are in their space basically went down with them in sympathy. So IPG, for instance, you know, didn't report yesterday, but I think there's a sense that maybe advertising services is uh, – is probably hitting a wall here in terms of uh, viability. Um, so let's go on to our last slide. And so here we are. So again, I'm, uh, this is Nick Webb. I'm in for Dan Russo. Dan comes back on Friday. So uh, he should be back in the seat that day. In the meantime, um, I'm going to do it tomorrow morning as well. And, uh, you know, I, I just want to take a moment here to really encourage everybody that's listening to this to go on and sign up for PowerFeed. It's free. There's no cost. But I think this is the quickest and most visual read you're going to get on a market um, across the board. And, you know, there's little things in there that are nuances that I think add a lot of value. So, you know, just simply getting the power bars by the indices, as you can see in this uh, sh uh, uh, picture of a mobile phone, I mean, that, that gives you context that you don't get from any other market newsletter. So this is something that, again, highly recommend. You know, you get all the power arcs on, you know, every stock that's mentioned. So this is something that I think, you know, just putting my two cents in, Sign up for that, and you'll get that in your mailbox every day. So anyway, it's been my pleasure. 
giving you the PowerFeed TV, market in a minute, market in 15.